it's weird, you know, as I collect the things to talk about for this show, I started to see this trend. And this one trended very closely to kind of a speaking topic that I have. And uh, it's it's titled uh, Stop Selling, Start Telling, which to be fair, I actually think you might have coined in a conversation that we had at one point. <laughs> did I? Yeah, I think you did. Well, look at me go. I'm glad you have you have such creativity and terrible memory. It works just, out really well for me. I just throw it away. Yeah. Two drops in rain. You just throw it away. So um, this one is tied to, there is this trend of companies that are going this really interesting route of storytelling. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is Nike. So apparently Nike and other companies, other Fortune 500 companies, Boeing, I think, is in there, are hiring sci-fi writers to predict their futures. The futures of the company. The company. Interesting. So this concept that for them to be able to develop future products, right, and innovate, they have to kind of understand what the future will look like, how people will interact with their own products, with just, you know, how they will consume things, how they will use things. Um, one thing that they talk about, this is, is called like sci-fi prototyping, future casting or world building. So the goal of these companies is generally the same, helping clients create forward-looking fiction to generate ideas and IP for progress and profit. So this is like Nike with the Back to the Future shoes saying like, what if we just had somebody create future shoes to begin with? Why? Yeah. And I think why that, wait for someone to beat us to it? And I think maybe that was also a jumping of the shark, right? That plays in very strongly to nostalgia because it's still, to your point from our pilot episode, it still feels like we don't need those shoes, right? For sure. But you think about this where, you know, you think about a company like Napster or a company like MySpace, right, which owned specific kind of we'll say verticals or or, or industries for a good period of time and right. then now they're not even existent right right they're like the 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 rubble underneath which facebook rolls along and you know or mere, spotify rolls along right and not but a mere 10 15 years later yeah not, which, which is a, that long i mean i mean that's a good run for a a company, but you know, you, I'm sure. Well, what was his name? Tom MySpace. I mean, mm -hmm. listen, he's sitting pretty. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you think about this as a service for companies to take advantage of to understand what it will kind of look like. And this gets into this recurring theme I kept seeing, which was storytelling. Right. So another example I saw was Chipotle has hired. Um, Errol Morris to do documentary style commercials. Like a thin blue line. <laughs> exactly. Like we that. want the director of a man falsely accused of murder <laughs> to give his ideas on burritos. It's what you're telling me. You know, listen, this doesn't sound that far fetched from um, a closed door brainstorming meeting that maybe you and I would have, but they just are able to act on it. They're able to get the guy. I mean, that's, it's interesting. And again, it goes into this like story. Oh, also just in case you were wondering the, um, the campaign name, I believe for this Chipotle documentary series is behind the foil. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the other thing. I, I, I saw this and I can't decide if I loved it or just slightly liked it. Um, Chipotle ran a two hour live feed on its Facebook page from the, from one of their kitchens. So fans, this is what they said, I believe 
Fans could watch their employees chop peppers and onions, stir ingredients, and so on. Does that not seem boring? Boring, but also, I mean, that's like, at, is that not degrading? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. Stir that guacamole and then deliver it to my door via favor. Yeah. Should they just have like, start to finish you know i can watch i can order chipotle and watch as it's being made and then delivered to my house right up until it hits my door i'm What's watching this guy the whole time so i got i got my own quality control on this guy so my pitch here would be because you always hear oh you don't want to see how the sausage is made that like jimmy dean does this so you can see how the sausage is made is that not i just came up with that that's a brilliant, like that's, if they go organic and do some sort of organic thing, that is the move. See how the sausage is made, and they do a documentary on it. That's the name of the channel you're saying. It's just called How the Sausage is Made, the, sure. the Jimmy Dean story. The Jimmy Dean story. Probably still pretty traumatic. From the people who, who brought you uh, <laughs> Making a Murderer comes How the Sausage is Made. <laughs> From the people who brought you Wormwood on Netflix <laughs> comes. <laughs> I just started watching Russian Doll, too. So the people who brought you Russian Doll. The fourth season of Serial presented by General God. Mills. You, yeah, God. well, it's got to be better than at least the second series of Serial. Uh, I mean, can we? Says the guy who is two episodes into a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's an arrogance there that I, you know what, I just need to own, and I'm and I apologize to the. I'm, cur the I'm curious. I'm curious. So, do you have any other examples of of actual? Yes. Of this There's like future more planning, that came whatever. Up. Again, this kind of it's weird, man. It's like these star. I don't know. Things start to kind of gravitate to, together. So, the the uh, the the third one I had was um, Hennessy hired Ridley Scott to do a, I'm using air quotes here, visually rich short film that's now, reminiscent of his sci-fi masterpieces. Now, if people out there who are just hearing about this, this will be in the show notes, on the show notes, tricycle-creative tricycle slash tripod. Um, I know you had a chance to watch some of it. I'm oh, eager to... <laughs> I watched it. Now, it absolutely was the most unrelated thing to Hennessy I could have imagined. <laughs> I mean, it the video looked like, I thought it was maybe a trailer for the new remake of Dune. Yeah. It, it looked like they were mining for spice on some yes. desert planet. Yeah. And I don't, like, the whole four-minute long excursion, I'm like, what does this have to do with liquor? But did it mean thirsty? No. I meant thirsty, like sexy thirsty. Oh, yes, very okay. much so. When I saw the giant naked gold golems waving well, to the spoiler alert. below. Jeez oh. Louise, it's okay. Sorry, that's part two of seven, by it the way. It is part two of seven. In a four-minute video that has seven parts, three of which I thought, okay, these seem like maybe they're ingredients in Hennessy, and then it started to lose me. Because part seven, I believe, is called Infinite Echo which I don't understand how that ties in That's in. That's to in a bottle of liquor at all. I, I looked. It's in there. It's, oh, it is in there? That's the ingredient. In, I'm looking it up right now, actually. So it's in there. Yeah, I. you know, the very honest part of me says I would love to be a company that can make that series. Right. Right. It, and what it... Right. First of all, to have the money to just throw at Ridley Scott to be like, I, hey, you got a four minute video in you. Not even an unknown sci fi guy, like arguably one of the biggest sci fi yeah. guys al alive, maybe yeah. even the biggest. Right. It's more than just having Matthew McConaughey on a beach being like, hey, I like this drink. You should drink it, too. I've seen you that know. car before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean he had to I assume work and shell out money for all yeah. of 
Yeah. Um, but to me, Do you what's think interesting. He contacted them. No. no. I had to ask. I had to ask. I no, I don't think so at all. It, I mean, it seems to me like, in my opinion, when I watched this, I thought Hennessy is actively trying to, to say like, this is what we're about, and it, and in my opinion, it's it's like what most people think, or at least what I think when I think of Hennessy, is I'm thinking of like, you know, hip hop videos, rap videos. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Hennessy's been the topic and song title of many different rap songs. And so it almost seemed like directed marketing to go against what maybe is the public opinion of Hennessy versus what they want to get out there. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. And I think that all of these things. So so what what does this mean for the small business entrepreneur? Um Video marketing is a huge growing field. And with that, I think comes some really great opportunities for people who do video, who are storytellers to lend their craft to the marketing space. Um, You know, but I, and I, and I, I, I have a feeling we'll talk a little bit about this in part three, but you know, the, it's really about understanding what your goal is when it comes to creating video, because, you know, the reality is with that Ridley Scott piece, I, I, I would argue that that is not even necessarily about selling more Hennessy. And so I think it's when you're a small business, you're an entrepreneur, unfortunately, you don't have the, uh, the, the money to maybe go into uh, brand exercises like that. But I think it's something that, um, you know, you should be aware of and be inspired by because those are the things that could potentially break through and even differentiate you. Yeah. I mean, I, as a small business, I don't think the Austin zoo is, uh, contacting Terry Gilliam to, uh, you know, come make his own remake of 12 monkeys, you know, to promote their brand. 